I'm showing you some solder sleeves for wire splicing and repair. These are really interesting little devices. They're heat shrink tubing that shrinks when it gets hot. There's a, the color spots are actually glue that melts um, and sticks to the wires. And then the center part is actually low melt solder that mixes with the metal parts of the wires. And once this is heated up on the wires, it glues them together and solders them together all in one time. It's really handy stuff. Um, I've got a couple wires here that I'm going to show you how to put them together. Now, normally you need um, a heat gun for these and they make some special ones with a little heat guard. Um, these are very high temperature, much hotter than a hairdryer. A hairdryer won't touch this stuff. Um, but most people don't have this and I wanted to show you how to use these if you don't have a heat gun. Um, now, I've got a couple wires one of them I've already stripped, and if you're lucky enough to have some wire strippers, you can, you know, strip the ends of the wires just a, you know, a little bit off of each end, and less than a half an inch. But what I like to do if I don't have any wire strippers handy is uh, get a pair of toenail clippers. You can take this off with scissors or whatever, but toenail clippers are a lot easier to apply the right kind of pressure, and scissors you you squeeze a little bit too much you cut right through the whole thing. These you just kind of squeeze just a little. You don't need to cut through the entire insulation part you just need to damage it. And then you hold it tight a little bit without crushing it and just pull. And pull the rip the insulation off finish it off and there you go. And then you twist the end of the wire so then it'll fray out. Now there's four different sizes the white one's good for tiny wires. I think this is the most common if you're fixing speakers in a device or headphone jack. These are great. The red one, um, you could use that for speaker wire for your audio system. You could use it for small lamp cords or um, smaller wires. The blue one is good for a lamp cord, uh, maybe a couple wires if you're doing something, you know, two wires on one end and one on the other. Um, and the yellow one is good for heavy extension cords, maybe automotive type of wiring. So I'm going to show you the red one here. I've got a couple wires and I just stripped it. Now, I don't have a heat gun, but I do have a lighter and a candle. Now, you do need to be careful. You don't want to get this directly in the flames. So I'm going to light a candle. The short ones in the jar are better because you don't want a tall candle that you have to deal with. You could also potentially use one of these long end lighters for charcoal grills. But the candle's nice, it's stationary, you don't have to hold it. Um, so what I'm going to do is put the wire in. Let me sort of focus this better. So the wire goes in, you want the... Um, insulation to be on the red. You want the wire to be on the solder pad. And now we've got the other side, the same thing. So the two stripped wires are going to overlap. Let me get this again. Yeah. So the red's over the insulation on both. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hold it over, let's focus on the candle, about one to two inches above the flame. The clear insulation will melt first, and that'll make it a little easier to handle. If you can rotate it, that's a big help too, kind of like rotisserie uh, chicken there. You'll spread the heat out better, more uniform. You'll be tempted to bring it down into that flame to speed up the process. But you don't want to do that because what can happen is the clear insulation will actually burn a pinhole. And the, the clear insulation is shrinking because it's shrink tubing. The hot metal is melting and expanding and it basically it'll squirt out that pinhole. And you don't want that to happen. You can get over, get on your hands, uh, just wear eye protection because it could get in your eyes. But the best thing to do is don't put it down on the flame, and I'll, I'll show you that 
what will happen if you do. Just keep it one to two inches. You can kind of go up and down a little bit too, so you're not maybe a little bit hotter for just a, a tad, but keep, still keep it at least a half an inch away from the flame, even when you do that. I can see it's starting to deform. It'll expand when it melts and go to the sides. And that's when you know it's really like gotten into those wires. And there we go. It's starting to move to the sides. Excellent. I'm going to finish off this red glue over here. doesn't look like it melted enough. And that's it. Take it away from the heat. And we're going to let that cool down for about a minute. So it's cooled off. It's hard to see, but it's uh, the solder is spread out quite a bit. I can see it like in between the wires. And uh, the red glue is holding those wires together makes a very, very tight bond that you, I mean, you can rip it apart if you really try it hard enough, but you can rip any wire if you grabbed a hold of it like that. And it's watertight. And keep the water out of there. You could use this outside, uh, in the car, automotive, great for automotive. Now let's say you're trying to fix a wire in a device and you can't hold this over a candle. Um, a lighter might work, but then you have to get right in there. That's kind of tricky. So these uh, long end lighters for charcoal grills, whatever, are great. Now again, you want to keep the flame away from everything. Try to get underneath because, of course, the, the heat goes up. Yeah, and the tube is shrunk nicely. I want to melt that solder. If you start to see any smoke coming off that clear tubing, you're getting, you're too close. Take your heat away immediately. Yeah. You can see the solder is moving now. And spread out a little bit and done. Okay, I'm going to show you what not to do. I've got some gloves on, just in case this thing squirts out and gets on my hands, and I've got eye protection. Um, when you're heating this up, you know, you can get it really close to the flame, and it'll uh, start to burn the actual plastic. It could catch on fire. It's bubbled there and it's turned black. Now, sometimes I've had the um, liquid solder come out of a hole that burned through the plastic and it squirted out. Um, usually just a little bit oozed out, but one time it actually squirted out. Luckily it was in the opposite direction of my hand at the time. Um, so definitely do not do that. I've had this catch on fire. Uh, the clear plastic part catch on fire I had to blow it out. You know, you want to hold this thing about an inch away from the flame and just slowly let it heat up. You don't want to stick it down in the fire like that. Yeah, see that red stuff just oozed out of a hole. So you want to be careful for that. Now you can't always hold this over a candle depending on what you're doing. The wires might be in something uh, you can't fit a candle under it. Uh, I've got a long end lighter here. It doesn't make a big flame. I've got it turned down. There we go. Now, you want, if you can, to just, again, slowly heat it up from below. But you've got a lot of motion. If You, you could really quickly kind of have it go, the flame go right through the tube. And notice how it's not blackening at all. Not burning, or very slightly if it is. Um, and that helps speed it up. Oops, sorry, um, I'm kind of going through like that. I don't know if you 
hold it too long in one spot, it'll start to blacken the, the clear tube and burn it, and it can catch on fire. Uh, solder can squirt out a micro hole that got burned through. You can see the solder's melting now. And just really quick touching of the flame to the device, like half a second, you know, real quick. It takes a little bit of practice and definitely wear eye protection, maybe even gloves. Okay, the solder's melting now. And there we go. It's very flexible right now, but once it cools off, it'll... Yeah, there we go. It takes just a couple minutes to cool off. You can already kind of touch it there. Okay, here's what not to do. So get it right on there, and it'll turn black. And it'll pop. Just popped and solder squeezed out a little hole, went pretty fast. Um, that can actually squirt out quite some distance because the tube is shrinking, the solder's melting, so the solder's expanding, the tube is shrinking, and it'll just squirt right out a hole that got burned through from the flame.